So imagine that we take a vertical axis and perpendicular to this vertical axis we draw an infinitesimal horizontal rectangle that touches the axis. Therefore the width of the rectangle is a small change along the y-axis, so its width is dy, and now imagine that we take this infinitesimal horizontal rectangle and we revolve it about this axis of revolution. And we use this little notation to represent revolving the rectangle about here the vertical axis of revolution. So imagine that you start spinning this rectangle about this axis really quickly it will generate, if you can imagine this, a small disk. The center of the disk is of course the axis of revolution. And you can see the rectangle being inscribed inside of this small disk. So this is a three-dimensional picture of the result of revolving this rectangle about this axis of revolution. And you can imagine it now, hopefully better, as you revolve this small rectangle about the axis of revolution, you generate a small disk. Another question we're interested in is finding the volume of this disk. Well, it should be fairly easy to see that all we need is the area of the surface of the disk times the thickness of the disk. Well, the thickness obviously is the width of our rectangle, EY, and the surface of the disk is, of course, a circle. So all we need is the radius of the circle, but clearly the radius of the circle is the length of the rectangle. So if we can find the length of the rectangle, then we have the volume of our disk. The area of the surface is the area of a circle of radius r, so it is pi r squared, times of course the thickness, the height of the disk, dy. And this is how you obtain the volume of a small disk created by revolving a rectangle about an axis of revolution when the rectangle is perpendicular to and touches the axis of revolution. And you can reproduce the exact same idea if the axis now is no longer vertical but horizontal. So imagine now you take the x-axis, you take an infinitesimal vertical rectangle that touches the axis in a perpendicular fashion, the width, of course, now is a small change along the x-axis, so it is dx. And if you revolve this rectangle about the axis of revolution, you, of course, obtain a little disk, but now standing up. And as before, the volume of our disk is given by the area of the circle, where, of course, the radius, as before, is the length of the rectangle. So pi r squared is the area of the surface of our disk, times, of course, the thickness of the disk, which is, of course, the width of the rectangle dx. And this is how you can obtain the volume of a small disk generated by revolving a rectangle that is perpendicular and touches an axis of revolution. And that's it.